Hey everybody, what's going on? How we doing? Today we're going to take a look at the Scream franchise. I'm going to be ranking the six Scream films. And I got to start off by saying that Scream is that franchise that does not have a bad film. I absolutely love every single Scream movie. I have an extremely emotional, nostalgic, loving connection with the Scream franchise. It might Scream is not my favorite horror movie of all time. You know, nothing will hold a candle to the, to the original Halloween, but Scream being the first horror movie that I ever ever saw and my brother showed me as a young kid, I was hooked immediately. I mean, it just it changed my life forever. Because <laughs> this is where I am now. I mean, I am I'm a Scream fanatic. I'm a horror fanatic, and I'm very very passionate. And the the Scream franchise, I kind of have a little bit more of a. I take it more personally. I'm very very like protective of it, and you know <laughs> that sounds a little silly, but like I said, I mean. All, out of all six of these films, there is not a bad movie. What makes Scream different than, let's say, Halloween or Elm Street or Friday the 13th or Hellraiser, Child's Play, you name it, whatever. You know, every movie is solid. You know, you look at half the Halloween franchise and you're like, oh boy. You know, but later half of the Friday the 13th movies, you're like, oof, here we go. You know, look at... Freddy's Dead, I mean, look at The Dream Child. I'm not a big fan of those films. I mean, Seed of Chucky, absolute garbage. I mean, I am really really only like care about the first few Hellraiser movies. You know, it, some of these iconic horror characters, you know, that just go on and on and on and on, they run out of ideas. And it's been 28 years this year since Scream debuted. And it seems like they've spaced out six films enough where they've kept it fresh and they haven't run out of ideas. And it's been it's been all right. That that shtick and that gimmick has not worn out too too much. And I you know, like I said, every one of these films I love. But I gotta I gotta put them in some sort of order of my enjoyment and my ranking. So that's what we're gonna do today. So, coming in in last place, technically, is the most recent Scream film, and that is Scream 6. I was heartbroken and, and scared to death when, when that girl, that woman right there, Nev, told, told the world that she would not be coming back for this film. I was, I was just all in distraught, but they pulled it off. You know, I I was very, very happy at the end of Scream 5 with the way that Sidney Prescott passed the torch to Sam Carpenter. You know, pretty much telling her, this is, this is yours now. This is going to be your franchise now. And, I mean, you got Kirby coming back. You know, I was jumping for freaking joy when Hayden Panettiere was back on board for this movie because... I remember going in to see Scream 4 in the theaters, like, oh yeah, cannot wait for this, ready to roll. And then I see Kirby, and I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, this young girl, I was, you know, I was like 18 at the time, and, uh, you know, a girl obsessed with horror movies. I was like, oh, my dream woman right there. But <laughs> she comes back, at, and, and this film is this badass detective, and, you know, with the police force, it was awesome. I mean, Courtney Cox did come back for this is that, you know, only real OG character, but you know, she didn't, she didn't over flood it. You know, they, they focused on the core four. I mean, then another thing about this is this was not the, probably another big, big worry for me was, is this going to be Ghostface takes Manhattan and you are damn right. It was not, this was not Ghostface takes Manhattan, and that made me so thrilled where I could enjoy it. It was a little. What, what, what another thing that makes me put this in last place is it did feel like the way Scream Five kind of felt like it was 
kind of, I don't know if you'd want to say, like, taking a lot of aspects from the original film, it really felt like Scream 6 was doing that with Part 2. It took a lot of, the, you know, the, the family revenge aspect. You know, I remember in Scream 2 with Billy's mother kind of having her motive to get revenge on Sydney. It felt, it felt like there was a lot of connections with Scream 2 when it came to this film, but I was able to get past that. The action was excellent, and uh, a little some unrealistic things did happen. I, I cannot believe, for the life of me, how in the hell Chad and Mindy survived. You know, the, the, the amount of stab wounds that Chad was subsept, you know, had to deal with, it was just outrageous. Who the hell is going to survive that? And that, you know, that gut buster Mindy got in the subway and then she just comes back at the end of the film and just acts like everything was all right. I'm like, what the hell is this? It was, it was wacky. But I mean, you know, you got Sam and Tara Carpenter, you know, I'm not the biggest Jenna Ortega fan. I'm not obsessed with her like everybody else is, but she gives a great performance in this. And we'll see what happens with Scream 7. When that when that happens, because as we know that those two girls right there aren't coming back, we don't know what's going to happen with the Meeks twins. We we don't know. This is just it's all up in the air right now of what's going to happen with Scream Seven. But I'm gonna just hope they patiently wait it out. And even though that Scream Six is in last place, I walked out of the theater happy and satisfied, and I do enjoy it, and I can rewatch this film anytime. But then next we have Scream 3, you know, a staple of my childhood, the original Scream trilogy. I mean, probably the most memorable thing for me out of this film was, you know, was Courtney Cox's hair. You know, it was a little, little out of whack there, you know, you know, and I think David Arquette gave, gave a great performance in this. You know, Dewey was a little, little bit more serious in this film. It was all right. I'm... Even though they made the mistake in Scream 2 of killing Randy, in my opinion, a very big mistake. It was cool to have uh, Jamie Kennedy's little cameo in here, and Nev was tied up with a lot of projects at this time. That girl was in demand and, you know, could only only put, it, put forth so much for this film. But what we got of Sidney Prescott, it was fantastic. I'm all right with... Roman Bridger. I'm okay with the whole half brother thing and having Roman be that one singular killer, you know, and being that want to be that famous director and the whole stab set thing. I'm I'm all right with that. It didn't it doesn't bother it didn't bother me then. It doesn't bother me now. I you got to remember this is a scream film. It's, you know, it is the way it is. But I know a lot of people have this as their least favorite, and there's a lot of people that don't, that don't even like this movie, but it might be one of the weaker entries, but it is still, I still absolutely love it. And it, it did feel, at the end, it felt like a, a perfect ending. You know, Sid felt comfortable enough to just leave that door open and walk away, and then look at her now. She, she, she ended up marrying, you know, Patrick Dempsey's character, you know, we got Sid and Mark married. You know, it's it's cute as hell. I love it. But, I mean, the addition of Patrick Dempsey in this film was awesome as well. Can't forget him. Then we have Scream 2022, a.k.a. Five Cream. Along with Halloween 2018, and when it comes to horror movies, this was probably the most highly anticipated horror movie for me ever. When they announced this, I was just in absolute, like, like ready to rumble mode, you know, ready to rumble. You see, you know, David Arquette back there, a great film of his. I was, I was just pumped and excited and hearing that the original trio was coming back and it felt, I, I was, I wasn't sure. Was this going to be a, a film just about, where Sid, Dewey, and Gail are now, I didn't know what, what this was going to be with Sam and, you know, with her being Billy Loomis's daughter and everything like that. And the whole, and her half-sister there, Tara, it was, it was very, very well 
branched out. It felt like a they took a lot of elements from the original Scream and they sprinkled in that legacy cast where it worked out perfectly. This wasn't just all flooded with Sidney Prescott or all flooded with Gail Weathers or Dewey Riley. I mean, in my opinion, this was probably David Arquette's best performance. Dewey was serious, he was pissed, and he wanted to put an end to it. You know, it was it was sad to see his downfall and how miserable he was. And, you know, I know that Courtney Cox and David Arquette were, you know, obviously were not married at this time anymore. They hadn't been for quite a while, but they, they played off the fact that they were separated and no longer together, And but he still loved her dearly. And deep down, Gail still loves Dewey. <laughs> but Sam was just, the way the way Sam Carpenter came off and seeing those hallucinations, you know, in her head of her father, seeing Billy Loomis's forced ghost, it was just, I, I loved it. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars kind of guy, so, you know, it's all right for me to see those hallucinations of Skeet Ulrich and how they had to, like, de-age him and whatnot. It was pretty cool. And I would highly recommend this to anybody. It was it was a great, great movie. Then we have Scream 4. I went and saw Scream 4 five times in probably the span of three weeks. I mean, I went back to back probably two times and then went, went another, probably that last, fifth and last time by myself. I just... This was Wes Craven's last Scream film. It was his last direct directed film before he passed away in 2015, and it was just awesome. It, they, this felt like such a good rejuvenating, like kind of like shot in the heart to the story where, you know, now you got Jill Roberts, you know, jealous of her cousin Sidney, you know, and then you got the Culkin kid in there as their little accomplice. It felt like Billy and Stu all over again, you know. <laughs> Just Jill was absolutely batshit crazy. But, you know, it was awesome that, you know, Sydney was obviously still the focal point of the story. You know, Dewey was the badass sheriff. You had Judy Hicks in there and Courtney Cox was great. It was awesome. But what what really sold me on this was the addition of Kirby Reed. <laughs> That crazy, awesome horror fan who was just into it all. I just, I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting in the theater, having her, you know, on the phone with Ghostface and her naming off all of those horror movies that have been remade or ruined. It was just, it was a, a, such a crazy moment that brought, like, almost brought tears to my eyes. But, you know, Scream 4 is a, an epic, epic film. I love it with all of my heart. And it just, the way that they took, it took 11 years to get to this point. It was 11 years between Scream 3 and Scream 4, but it doesn't, doesn't bother me that much. They didn't rush it. They took their time and waited to strike at the right time while the iron was hot and it, and it, it paid off big time. And then just to think there was, you know, 11 more years between Scream 4 and Scream 5 there, you know, they didn't, they, they don't rush anything. And I love that. In second place, we have Scream 2, an absolute fantastic sequel. I mean, I love everything, absolutely everything about this film, other than one thing. The most devastating thing happened in this film, and in my, in my personal opinion, probably the biggest mistake in the history of horror was killing Randy Meeks. <laughs> Randy Meeks being one of my top all-time favorite characters in horror, but Jamie Kennedy, he, he 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 got it in this film, and it was it was sad. I can't Im not imagine what the rest of the franchise would have been like if if Randy Meeks lived, if Jamie Kennedy went on to be a pivotal part of Scream Three and Scream Four, and even even in these newer Scream films, it would have been incredible. But you know. Cotton Weary redeemed himself in this film. Sid was able to forgive him and realize that he was innocent and she was able to move on. And then having, you know, Aunt Jackie be the killer, you know, not Aunt Jackie. I know Mrs. Loomis, but 
uh, and then Mickey, you know, but Sid was all just concerned that it was Derek the whole time. She thought it was her boyfriend. You know, everybody's thinking, oh, it's going to be the boyfriend. You know, Dewey was really kind of, you know, Dewey and Gail digging behind the scenes to find out what the hell was going on here. And then the creation of Stab, it was just, this movie did so many things right. And, it, and to think that they rushed this, to think this came out less than a year after the original, and it was still so freaking awesome. It just says, I mean, it just says how incredible of a filmmaker Wes Craven is, that he was able to to just shoot this out of his heart and just get this off the ground and get it to be so amazing so quickly. But then we have the original Scream from December 20th, 1996. Wes Craven gave us this film. The film that revitalized the horror genre for the late 90s. Horror, well, the slasher primarily was dead. You know, you look at things we had, you know, in the early 90s, we had, you know, Candyman, and that was about it. You know, we had some lackluster, poor horror movies, slasher movies that were coming out at this time, and then out of nowhere, Wes Craven saves us with Scream. This being the first horror movie that I ever was subjected to as a young child. I know that, <laughs> as you see, I got I got Sydney Prescott right here in front of the camera. You know, she is, in my opinion, the all-time greatest final girl in the history of horror. My wife cannot stand Nev Campbell because she's like my all-time favorite actress. I really, really enjoy pretty much everything she's been in. I have a lot of her movies. I, I've watched a lot of television that she's done. But just the... The cast of overall characters in this film and the way that it had so many, but it just everybody played their part. You know, you look at the cover here, we got you got Drew Barrymore, you got David Arquette, Courtney Cox, Nev, and Skeet. You know, Drew taking that hit for us in the beginning, beginning of the film. You know, just everything was out in the open. Everybody was like, holy shit, the Janet Lee moment, you know, killing off cute little Drew in the first 10 minutes of this film. Anything goes. And then, you know, Nev was really kind of unknown at the time. You had Party of Five, and that was it. But you had, you know, Friends was big. So everybody knew, knew who Courtney Cox was. So, and then, you know, Deputy Dewey. It was just like the craziest, most fun thing ever. Randy Meeks, Jamie Kennedy. I, I've said a couple times in this film that Randy Meeks is my... One of my top three all-time favorite, like, side characters in the history of horror. Matthew Lillard is Stu. Yes, for all you people out there on the Stu train, I, I get it and I respect it. But if Matthew Lillard does come back for anything in the future when it comes to Scream, I just really hope they flush it out properly and do not ruin what happened in the original film and they don't water down his supposed kill with that TV crushing his head. Now, them, tu them tube TVs were pretty damn heavy back in the day. So they better they better think of something really, really good to sell me on that if if Stu is somehow alive. But when it comes to this film, Scream, it is absolute perfection on all levels. I love it with all my heart, and I just, like, I don't know, I, I can't, my brain can't think of anything negative to say. It, it really can't. But I just hope that if they continue this, this franchise on, which I'm sure they're going to, that they take their time with Scream 7, and I really hope so. So thank you guys very, very much. Until next time, you take it easy. Peace out.